So with regards to sort of the diagnostic strategy, I'm going to start with basic. We report that inflammatory bowel disease, the diagnosis is based on gold standard criteria. The gold standard would be endoscopy and colonoscopy um, with ileal visualization, because if you don't get into the ileum, you're missing potential for Crohn's. So endoscopy means ileal colonoscopy, in my opinion. Um, so you have your gold standard endoscopy. Uh, as, I, as I noted that with UC, it looks different than Crohn's in most of the cases. Uh, we look at location. Is it patchy? Patchiness is more of a Crohn's thing. Continuous is more of a UC thing. So there are aspects of even to the eye of the endoscopist, which we call macroscopic visualization, that differentiate UC from Crohn's, but both are made by colonoscopy. Uh, the other part of the standard would be radiologic, such that if you couldn't get into the ileum for some reason because it was narrowed or you couldn't find it at the time of the endoscopy, um, then you do imaging to look at the small bowel. And the gold standard now is cross-sectional imaging, which involves either a CT enterography or a MR enterography. Uh, and in Europe and Canada and some parts of the US, we're actually using small bowel ultrasound to look at the small bowel. The uh, limitation of the small bowel ultrasound, it only really looks at the distal part of the small bowel because then your bowel dives down and you can't find it, which is why MRE and CTE have sort of become the gold standard for what we call cross-sectional. When we say cross-sectional, it means we could see all four walls of the bowel by definition for Crohn's. Um, and that is really for the small bowel sort of, um, in sort of adding to the diagnostic yield. So in Crohn's patient, we can see how long the segment is. With our scope, we can only get up a certain, you know, certain amount of centimeters because our scope is only so long, but uh, imaging can help literally like from the stomach down to the down. So that enhances our diagnostic yield. Histopathology, which means the biopsies. There are some findings and biopsies that differentiate UC from Crohn's. The most notorious one is called granulomas, um, non-necrotizing granulomas. We often worship the granuloma because when we do see it, we're like, yeah, this is Crohn's. But unfortunately, a small percentage of biopsies that have the yield of seeing granuloma. So when we find them, we're excited. When we don't find them, it doesn't mean the patient doesn't have Crohn's. Um, so those are the things we sort of look for is chronicity on the biopsies, not just acute because acute could be infection only. So we look for acute and chronic changes on the biopsies. And um, in terms of, and clinical symptoms, which we've described sort of what differentiates UC from Crohn's and where the disease can be located. In terms of biomarkers, it's a very hot topic right now. Um, biomarkers are not in any way replacing our gold standard. I think where biomarkers are coming into play is when we make the diagnosis, we have biomarkers that we benchmark against our sort of our foundation of diagnosis, endoscopy and radiology. We, for example, fecal biomarkers, fecal calprotectin is a very hot topic in terms of can we look at whether inflammatory mediators in a sense in the stool representing the mucosal integrity, can we use that not for diagnosis, sometimes for differential diagnosis between functional and inflammatory diseases, but you make that based on your scope because you're not going to say, oh, you don't have IBD based on a stool marker. You need the endoscopic confirmation. But when you do have IBD and you benchmark with a fecal marker, you can then use the fecal marker for following or what we call disease monitoring, such that if there is a change, you want to look at treatment response, you could look at the drop in the calprotectin. And the nice thing about Calpro is that it actually will go up, could be up to four to six months before a clinical symptoms ar arise. And we've shown that calprotectin correlates even not just with the eye of the endoscopist, but the pathology. So even in patients who looked good to the eye of the endoscopist, but still have inflammation under the microscope, the calprotectin will be elevated as a reflection of that, which is really interesting because in UC in particular, we're heading towards histologic healing, where we're actually getting normalization of the mucosa under the microscope. That's how good our drugs could be, which is pretty spectacular. It's been shown that even when the scope looks good, but the pathology is abnormal, it could also predict flare. 
So we're getting really deep. I guess the next level would, would be molecular remission, which we're not going to talk about because we're not there yet in terms of biomarkers. And the other biomarkers classic is CRP or C-reactive protein, which we follow probably more so in Crohn's than you see because, again, if you see is only the mucosa and they have really high CRP, that's troubling because either they have an infection or their disease is starting to actually more become even transmural, and that means the patient is sick. So CRP in a UC patient is a marker, I think, of severity. In Crohn's disease, patient, we can pay, um, a significant number of patients have CRP that's elevated, and just like the fecal marker, we look for a drop in the CRP as a response to treatment. Um, the only problem with CRP is about a third of patients may not even mount CRP genetically, so it's complicated. That's why we don't rely on biomarkers only for diagnosis, and perhaps we shouldn't be making treatment decisions based on biomarkers alone because their predictive value is not 100%. There's a future of biomarkers in the blood that people are interested in or biomarkers in the mucosa itself, meaning looking at gene expression to be able to look for using those biomarkers to tell you which treatment a patient should get. Because we have a lot of toys in our toy box, but we're not so sure how to use all of them and which sequence of therapy is important for patients may be tied more to biomarkers than its role as diagnosis.